one of the difficult things about making sculpture is to make it sort of breathe and live. You have to give life to the things you create. We knew that we needed to have a garden. We knew that we needed to have studio space and you know, a house that would be big enough to accommodate our family, our growing family. It was just a really odd happenstance to be going for a walk and be pregnant and find pretty much exactly what we were looking for. We thought, okay, well let's go for a walk and see if we can get labor started. There was a house completely buried in trees and shrubs. We just fell in love with it. We made an offer and they accepted it and he was born that night. <laughs> so I think this little boy just wasn't ready to be born until he had a place to come home to. <laughs> we discovered we had a big garden and so we could fill it up with all sorts of big weird sculptures that we made. One of the things we've started doing is having the sculptures interact with the ground. The space has kind of suggested what the art is. Rising Nike is a good example of that. It used to just be an open meadow area, but once she was there, it began to suggest shapes. The sea serpent is another one of those pieces. We see what is rising above the ground and then surmise that the rest of the serpent is swimming underneath. We would find these amazing rocks all over the garden. Colin and I would gather them and I started using them in the mosaics. Colin has special rocks and shells, and every once in a while she's taken one of his special shells to put in Fish Boy or the Green Man, and <laughs> it's just these like howls of protest when they <laughs> discover their favorite thing in, in I mom's take their art. Favorite things. <laughs> I take the things they don't pick up. Yeah. The Green Man is a piece where Peter sculpted the form and I did the mosaic work on top of it. All three of us actually, Colin found a lot of the rocks in the garden. It's thought of as a nature spirit and always one that's kind of hidden. Montserrat fits well in the garden because it's a sculpture of a mother and a child. We've got a little redwood grove that's dedicated to that idea. The piece I relate to most would be the mother. Objects that are embedded in her surface are in stratified layers as in the earth. All of the natural sort of detritus is at the bottom of her. Further up to the top, there are more contrived things that humanity would have put into our garbage dumps. In my family, there have been a, a number of artists. My parents always supported us in making things and working with our hands. Our philosophy with Colin is to give him the materials and let him do what he wants to do. Plotikins was the first one I made, and then I think I um, made an Allosaurus. I made two raptors, and I just recently made a little baby raptor. Then I made a bonafide raptor that the allosaurus is eating. One of our most recent pieces is a fountain that's made out of casts of giant gunnera leaves. Well known as dinosaur food. <laughs> we open up our gardens and participate in art trails every year. We have kids that come and play in Collins Gardens or play in the dinosaur garden or swing on the swings. I think the life that the sculptures have is the life that we give them. 
just like you know Robin does with the garden or both of us have done with Colin, we try to do that with everything around here.